Well, hi, welcome to another episode of Bill Selleck Talks. My name is Bill Selleck. This is me talking. We are going to talk about music. We're going to listen to some music. We're going to make some music. We're going to talk about AI. We're going to talk about and listen to AI making music. Ooh, so much. Uh, my mind has been kind of blown the last couple days looking at generative AI music. Well, I guess not looking at, listening to generative AI music. We're going to focus mostly on one platform, Suno. The other one that's a, a close second is Udio. And I guess they all have to be four letters and end in an O or have something silly. I think like Mbappi is another one or something. Anyway, so what what is generative AI music? Well, let's talk about what we do know. We know generative AI text where you say like, write an email for me about this and that. And then something like chat GPT will give you an email about this and that. If you continue in that one chat for a while, you, it'll start to learn what you like and don't like and start to actually kind of sound like you, which is pretty sweet, right? So like, you know, kind of check, 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 talked about that. Um, we've talked about generative AI imagery where you give it a prompt and say, give me an image of this, this, and that. And uh, my two favorites these days are Dolly 3 built into chat GPT pro chat GPT plus. I don't know. Or mid journey, right? So mid journey, you go to prompt and there's, there's very specific prompts to get certain feels for it. And then mid journey is going to give you four images and you're like, I like image three. And then you get four images of that. I like image four and then you get four images of that. So by kind of doing a, a decision tree, you can slowly figure out and craft kind of what you want your image to look like. Dolly 3 built into ChatGPT, you give it a description, it'll do a thing, and you can actually give it feedback, like, um, you know, give me a bottle of champagne with, like, a vineyard in the background, and it does that. And I was like, oh, you know, instead of champagne, make it a Merlot, and then it, it might do that. Um, you know, add, add the bottle of wine in there also with a glass of Merlot, and it might do that as well. Um, <laughs> my favorites actually have been... Uh, like just making it like the superlatives is maybe what we can call it. Making something bigger or better or, or wackier. Like, you know, give me a picture of a dog um, bringing back a stick for a happy owner. And so first image is like a, a golden retriever bringing back a stick to uh, any guess what the owner was? A white man. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, but instead of going down kind of that rabbit hole around like the inherent bias of, of these image generations, um, generators, I just was like, <laughs> let's see how ridiculous we can make this. Make the stick bigger, bigger stick, make the stick bigger, bigger stick, make the stick bigger, much, much bigger stick, like bigger than the person, bigger than the dog. And eventually um, there's like multiple galaxies behind the dog and chat GPT with Dolly was like, this is the biggest it possibly can be. I cannot possibly give you a bigger image of a stick with a dog that is happy bringing it back to his owner. So we've done all of that. That's great. Our last episode, we talked about what AI video generation is going to be, right? So generative AI video. And what I think is profound about that, and we're going to continue to hear that in this episode, is that the better you are at writing, the better you're going to get videos. So it's not just like a script thing. It's like you're actually a better cinematographer if you can describe those features more. And so now today, that brings us to generative AI music. So with Suno, this is where you type in a description. You can be focused more on like a vibe or a, a lyric description or focus more on, on more technical musical parts. So I've seen some examples where people list a genre, beats per minute, um, those types of things. What I actually did was give it the prompt, a rock song with a melodic pop punk guitar melody for teachers about hey, how AI can be used to help teachers and students create amazing things. So fast forward about 30 seconds, it generates that. And I got an amazing song about the power of AI in schools. So let me just play the whole song for you. It's about two minutes long.
stereotype of fear out of the books and into the code. Unlocking the top, we're once close. Power in our hands, can't you see? Right? <laughs> right? Oh, like, that was a whole song that did not exist yesterday. But it's here. It exists now. It's a song that's not a person singing. That's not a human. Um, so what, what do we get to do and not do with it at this point? Like, if I wanted to make any changes, I'm going to get a whole new thing. Just kind of the earlier versions of, like, uh, generative AI imagery. If I do a new prompt, I get kind of a whole new thing. I don't get to say like, oh, make verse two do this or like make a shorter intro. It's just you, you get what you get and you don't get upset. So if that's all you're trying to do is just like have some fun with it, show off what you can do with it, like all of those things, amazing. But that's that's kind of it. So I already know like a couple of tech directors. Um, other people that do like tech at schools are like, let's use it for iPad collection. Let's use it to describe what the tech department does. Um, and those songs are fantastic. And, and I, I never would imagine someone would write a song about that to take the time to actually like write the chords, figure out the melody, plug in their guitar and record it add the drums and the bass and the vocals and do all the vocal takes. So the vocals are in tune, um, let alone even just write the lyrics for it. So this particular niche of like, haha, iPad collection song, um, amazing, right? So what this isn't going to do, though, is a lot. And I think so many people have this like immediate response of, ooh, ooh. And I think that because I've played this particular song for a whole bunch of people. If, if you see me like in the next week, I might be like, check this out. Either I text it to you or just hold my phone in your face. Um, it's either like, whoa, that's amazing. Or, oh, oh, like, oh, almost like a, a, a villager in Minecraft. Huh, huh. I don't know what to do with that. Huh. And, and I think the reaction was like, well, music is such a human thing. And, and we connect to music really emotionally. I think each of us have a, like that song we listen to on repeat for which, which emotions or life experiences should we go through? Like a massive breakup, an epic road trip, um, a moment with a friend when um, something very emotional happened with a family member or friend. You know, someone got married and it was like a, something somebody died and it was a thing there was like a new job and you celebrated with like the thing you just bought like a camper van and you're like first song in the camper van thing like that song i think holds a special place in each of our memories and i think part of the fear is like oh shoot we want humans doing this it feels it feels what like a breach of trust maybe that AI could generate this whole thing in 30 seconds, like not in, in faster than real time. You know, like if we rewind went to 2002 when I was working at Orange Whip Recording Studios, when we spent hours, like dozens of hours and hundreds and thousands of dollars to record a single song, that song would export in real time. You couldn't even like a three minute song took three minutes to export, not even to record, not certainly not to write and like record the vocals and re-record like one word at a time to get every single word just right. All of that aside, just the exporting <laughs> out of Pro Tools or Logic Pro into an MP3 file, that used to happen in real time. And this creates the entire song in quicker than real time. So that two minute song took like 20 seconds to actually be created, which is wild in, in so many ways, but it's, it's not gonna replace so many things. I think. Like at our core, like we connect with other humans that can make us 
feel things through music. And thus far, these songs are not doing that. They're they're pretty generic. They're surprisingly catchy. But they're just kind of there. Like if you just want some music in the background, having some friends over for a barbecue, like create a bunch of AI songs and run with it. And you're like, oh, you know, that's a cool playlist. What was that? Oh, like I used AI to write all those songs from the last hour. What? Uh, that feels like a good use, but like really digging into a song and connecting with an artist and, and a band, um, I think is still going to be a thing. Live music is still going to be a thing. Like this isn't destroying live music. Uh, but what this might replace is stock music, background music, um, for like no budget things. So I'm working on my ed tech masters. I'm doing a video. I need two minutes of background music. This is perfect, right? (laughs) This is, you are not taking away jobs from people that are writing music. Um, you likely wouldn't have paid to license music for your project. Um, and for that matter, really any student working on a project, you can get a piece of music, including instrumental. Like I could have checked an instrumental box and gotten it and, uh, and it would have been done. Sweet. Um, I think people with very small teams that are creating content, either just you're a random content creator, you're a YouTuber, you need some background music. This is amazing. I, in general, I think those people do not have teams of composers on their, um, on their teams. It's just use whatever you can pay to license it maybe, or, you know, come up with something just different enough that we don't get a strike for, um, for copyright claims. So like, I I don't see it really hitting any of those things. Anyone that works in a school is trying to make a video for their school. Obviously this is an amazing solution for that. But I think that live music is going to continue to thrive. And in some ways, I think it might actually become more interesting, more powerful, more profound, and actually more fun for people that are musicians. So let's dig into that just a tiny bit. So what I used to be amazing at and like genuinely talented at um, as a songwriter was taking someone's idea of a song and they're like, here's a chorus, here's a verse, that's all I got. Um, and then I would take that, add, a, add an intro, write a bridge for it, add the outro, rearrange it so that there's like two measures of this. And then we'll take like leading into the chorus, that becomes this part, and then we'll we'll change the chords here, and that's the bridge. And then sh- shake some spices of music theory and do like, you know, five of five to a one of five to a Neapolitan six, resolve that to a five and then a one. And then we're set. Um, like I, I used to get really, really deep into the music theory of stuff. Um, and that was kind of my, my super hero talent is taking a, an idea of someone and then being able to do it and turn it into a song that we wrote. And so when I did that, I never felt like it was their song. It always felt to me like it was our song. And so I wonder if this, for songwriters like me that kind of need a starting point from like, like, like blank page syndrome, right? So with writers, particularly when I was teaching like my second graders, there were some kids that just really struggled with getting those first two sentences down. It's just a blank page, like I'm stuck. And if I left them alone for a writing assessment, it would be one sentence in one hour didn't really do that but you know like for for assessments when you're not able to help because you want to just genuinely see what's your independent writing at the blank page is um is not to be underestimated and so what generative ai text can do is it gives you a first draft and maybe it's a terrible first draft but it's a first draft you no longer have a blank page in front of you so i wonder for people like me that can play with music and like and work on something i wonder if something like this using a a platform like Suno to get an idea and be like, Oh, that one little bit that, that gives me an idea. And then do like a version of that and then a version of that and then a version of that. And then, you know, after like an hour of, of noodling around with this idea, suddenly I have a song and I just used it as kind of a brainstorming partner as like a, let's just noodle around and see what we get. Um, not using the vocals or the drums, or guitar or whatever, but using it as like songwriting ideas so that me as the songwriter 
ceases to have blank page syndrome of what blank sheet music syndrome. Is that what we would call it? I don't know, whatever that would be. But the idea that I can just sit down, type in a prompt and get a whole song and then use that to help me write my own song that <laughs> I think there's something there for that, that, that gets, that gets pretty interesting with that. Um, I wonder about that for people who actually do sit down with just a guitar or piano or whatever and write a song from scratch. Um, I wonder how they feel about this. I mean, I actually texted uh, my old singer Brent and his response. Let me get into my text messages. Uh, what the, <laughs> how is that even possible? That was his response. He's like, I don't even know how they do that. Um, just like this, like I, I used to spend hours with my guitar, like writing a song. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a thing. Let's, let's pivot for a moment though, as we kind of wrap things up and talk about how we might use this in the classroom. So right away, I've been sharing this with teachers the last couple days. I've been like, listen to the song. Just again, kind of shoving my phone in their face, um, texting different colleagues and friends and whomever being like, there's a whole song. Like that's a song that it, it exists. Um, in the classroom, it can be like, let's work on a song together about a thing. You know, if I'm doing like, uh, sums to 10 in a first grade lesson, you know, what two add-ins get you to 10, like write me a song about adding and how it's fun. Cool. <laughs> there's my anticipatory set. Let's summarize what we were just working on in like sixth grade science. Give me a, a thing about um, like gravity on different planets. Cool. Like that's us wrapping up our lesson or like maybe each each group like you're popping in as the teacher to each group and you're writing a song with each of them and you like airdrop to them and they have to take that song and make a slideshow out of it. Like there's so many ways that suddenly you get this custom piece of music it suddenly opens the door for all kinds of creative ideas and processes and projects. And what's particularly interesting, and I think we need to circle back to this. I haven't talked about this in at least like 50 podcast episodes. It's the power of music for learning and remembering. There's like a special part of our brain. I, I almost say like there's a special part of our soul that remembers music. And so if you can sing it, you can remember it Ki kind of right like that's a bit of a stretch but the idea that we can like write songs with our students or have an app like suno write songs for us and then just play that for them um regardless of how how much it, it's not quite what we were thinking uh, i mean you can even paste in custom lyrics if you want to write lyrics as a class and set them to music that would be actually an amazing lesson as well or maybe you you kind of do some old school app stacking and you use chat GPT to help you write lyrics and then paste those lyrics into Suno and then it'll take those lyrics and set them to music and have an AI sing it for you. Uh, just so many possible ideas with that. And all of this being said, this is just one, one platform. And this is also the worst this platform will ever sound. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get more amazing from here. So I think we're going to look at kind of this moment and be like, oh, remember that podcast episode where you introduced us to Suno? Yeah, that was like, it'll be laughable how, how terrible it was. Um, but right now it's, it's mind blowing. It's amazing. Uh, before we go, I have some outro music for you. That's going to be a bit on the nose about AI writing music, but there's one other platform that I really like for this. It's called Udio. U D I O. So the first one was Suno, S U N O.com, Suno.com. This one's Udio.com. So I took the same idea and threw it into Udio. And I can tell you ahead of time, I'm definitely going to color your own opinion on this. Um, I think Udio does a better job with the overall sound quality. I think the vocals sound more realistic. I think the drums have, um, or really all the instruments, have better production value. They just sound like better instruments. Um, I still like Suno because it feels like a complete song. I really like the melodies of Suno that you already heard. Um, the melodies of, of what the person, person in quotes, of, of what the AI will sing. That melody, the guitar melodies, the chord progressions, um, all of that kind of musically, I think is more interesting in Suno. The lyrics I like more in Suno. 
I haven't spent a lot of time on either, but right off the bat, I, I, I tend to lean more towards Suno, which is why I played you the whole song right off the bat. I think it's just kind of a catchier song, um, but the actual um, quality of the sound we hear from Udio, I think is actually a little bit better. So let me play one for you right here. Uh, this is from Udio. And so it, it just, it stops right there, uh, which is kind of funny, but whatever. Um, right? Again, I, that's, it's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, there's a few parts of that that, you know, could potentially get stuck in my head that are kind of nuggets of what I might do for my own song. I think is, yeah, it was super, super interesting. Um, I picked kind of punk rock-ish songs because that's kind of my default, but it'll do a whole bunch of genres. You can specify genres, um, tempos. If you go to, to either of the websites, you'll see like kind of a whole bunch of prompts and a whole bunch of examples that show you, you know, if you type this stuff in, here's kind of what the output is going to be. Um, it's a wild time. I think... I actually tried this. I usually don't give you too much behind the scenes on this episode. I tend to really think through podcast ideas. And once I have a fully formed idea, then I'll just hit record and try and do it in mostly one take. With this one, though, this is actually my third time starting the podcast completely over. Like I was 10 minutes in the first time, um, and I think I had a meeting and just kind of stopped and was like, ah, that's just, that wasn't, that wasn't it. Uh, and then tried it again yesterday afternoon and um, had carpool duty and was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but never like, I couldn't wrap my brain around generative AI music in a way that over everything from like the last 30 episodes, I've been able to come to the microphone and be like, here's this thing. And I know that by kind of talking through it with you, that I can get to a point where it's a coherent thought and where had I not done that, I wouldn't have that coherent thought for myself uh, and certainly like doesn't help you at all. But with this one, I was really stuck with like, what do I, what do I do with this? What do I even call it? Like the first time I didn't even know, like I, I finally had to write it down just in text edit and be like generative AI music because I didn't know what to call it. Like it felt like such a departure. And I think that goes back to the idea of, um, of music being just like, I think a more intimate thing for all of us, maybe speaking for myself, it's a more intimate thing for me that there's songs that really mean a lot to me in ways that there aren't emails or pieces of art that mean a lot to me. I've never been like, oh, that piece of art, like, oh yeah, that, that speaks to me. But there's music that just like, I play it and instantly have all kinds of emotions and am like transported to another place and time. Like I, I can remember exactly where I heard that in a particular moment. And so that's why maybe I was kind of hesitant and had like two false starts with this episode because I didn't know quite how to wrap my brain around it um, and kind of capture the emotions of it. But I, I think we got there in this episode. It's one of the longer ones. Uh, instead of the usual music for uh, my my song outro for our podcasts i'm gonna play one more this one is a rock anthem uh the title it gave was digital melody and it's it's about how kind of uh ai doesn't have a soul and can't replace humans and i didn't give it that prompt it ended up being like a really self-reflective kind of thing so see how many of the lyrics you can catch uh it's pretty wild and so I will leave you with this music as the outro. It'll finish the way it finished. It actually looks like it has a, a decent kind of fades out. Uh, and so with that, I will thank you for listening. Enjoy our outro music, Digital Melody. My name is Bill Selleck. This has been me 